Hey, it's uh, Ansley in the former Germain Robin tasting room. What I got up today is a cognac we just brought in. We were very lucky to get it. I got this wonderful email from a guy who knew right away that we were going to be able to do business because they're small and they kind of get it. Anyway, Pierre de Segonzac. Now, um, Pierre de Segonzac, there's an interesting story about this brand. Um, it used to be... Uh, the guy's name was Pierre Ferrand. He's, he's dead now, but he started a, his own brand in the 1970s and it got picked up by somebody and they did a very successful business uh, actually all around the world. Then they had some kind of fight around two th year 2000 and they split up and so the Pierre Ferrand brand now belongs to the marketer so this guy can't use it anymore. So they use it for cognacs that Pierre Ferrand doesn't make and Pierre Ferrand's brand is now called Pierre de Segonzac. And he's what's known in French as a bouilleur de, de cru, which means that he only distills um, wine made from grapes that on vineyards that he owns, okay? And they have this 19-acre vineyard in near Segonzac in a place called La Nérol. And um, uh, I mean, they farm their grapes, they harvest them, they crush them, they ferment them, and they distill them. And this is how cognac used to be, let's say, 150 years ago. There were no big distilleries, and everybody, everybody who grapes had a you know, small still in their backyard, and they would distill their, uh, they would distill their, they would make wine from their grapes and then uh, uh, distill them and then sell them to the big houses. And the big houses had big warehouses full of aging cellars where they blended and so forth, but they didn't have distilleries. And then when the Chinese trade happened um, around the turn of the 1900s, then the big houses who needed a lot more cognac in a hurry started uh, building these big distilleries, which now dominated. I mean, you know, um, Hennessy is six million cases a year, six million cases a year. Um, anyway, so this is a guy, he's a survival. And what's great about a Bouillel de Cru is that he knows his stuff. He has distilled different vintages from his vineyard for, I mean, you know, let's say Pierre Ferrand, when he was in his prime, was in his 60s, right? So for like, you know, 40 years he's been running stills, making uh, great cognac from his own grapes. And you get to know him really well. You know how to adjust the still. You know how to maybe you... Um, you know, you run your still a little bit differently, you make your cuts a little bit differently because you know your grapes, you know your wine. So that's what we got here. And uh, the first one I'm talking about is, this is just called Cognac. It doesn't have an age classification. It's younger brandies. <coughs> and where they are located, Segonzac is in the heart. It's the very epitome of Grand Champagne Cognacs. And you know that, you know, Cognacs are delimited by the soil types and Grand Champagne is largely regarded as the best cognac and these guys are right in the epicenter. I mean Segonzac has an excellent reputation for its grapes and um, 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 this has got cognacs in it that are 12 years old. And the rap on Grand Champagne is it's not the greatest thing to drink when it's two or three or four years old. That's Fin Bois and Petit Champagne. But Grand Champagne takes a while to come around. But these are very fine old grapes. And Grand Champagne, where it hits you in your nose is high up. You don't get it in the front part of your nose. You get it high up. It's very subtle. And you get these kind of like hints of, you know, walnuts, leather, and it, it takes a long time for a cognac like this to open up. But um, uh, what you look for in these in Grand Champagne is subtlety and finesse, and this has plenty of it. It's got this beautiful, rich mouthfeel. And the other thing Grand Champagne is famous for is the length of its finish. So the finish just lasts forever. This is a really beautiful cognac. And we only get a little bit of it. I mean, you know, 19 acres, he's selling all over the world. He has his cognacs in 41 starred Michelin restaurants. That's the level of reputation that he has. So we're very lucky to have this product.